the other way with boy rape. This is sickening. This is just sickening. Uh, you know, before we go on, and I want to hear more about it, it's very important the American people know how corrupt Obama is and how he's destroyed the morale of the military on every level, how he's debasing the world wherever he sends our troops. Uh, apparently, they can't fire a gun in self-defense, but they can let a man rape a boy uh, and not say anything? That's the new military? Yeah. Hold on a minute. I'll be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Hey, we don't have a ship that can sail anymore. But the catering has gotten better. I got to tell you, I was a guest aboard one of the warships. They're very good. They look very good in the dock. There's like the Russian fleet in the Baltic now. Very nice meals. They serve meals very good. Can't fire a shot, can't fire a missile, but wonderful meals. And the, the officers are afraid to walk on decks at night for fear that one of the gangbangers, that it's a, one of the uh, enlistees, will, will stab him in the back on the deck in the dark. No, ask him. They've told me. The officers are afraid to walk on the decks of their own ships at night for fear they'll get stabbed or shot in the back. Anchors away, my girls. You're listening to the Savage Nation. We're talking with a caller, Anna Maria Cardinale, who is an American military investigator, a classical guitarist, and an operatic contralto. She graduated high school at 14, college at 18, PhD in theology. Unbelievable. I didn't know you were this smart, Anna Maria. Welcome back to the Savage Nation. Are you another one of the geniuses in the Bay Area who's ignored by the uh, local geniuses on Pacific Heights who own the newspaper, the mimeograph sheet? Well, sir, I'll tell you what I am. I also, I'm also a Navy lieutenant, and I did love the food. What you're saying just breaks my heart, but I like your musical selection there. You were a Navy lieutenant as well? I am a reservist, yes. Now, what, what kind of ships were you on? Never was. I'm a sand sailor. <laughs> what do rack and up So you mean there are people in the Navy who never never go on ships, like the woman who runs the Navy, that kind of thing? <laughs> no, I mean, Obama picked a woman to run the Navy who never sailed a Chris Craft motorboat. He picked a woman to run the Air Force who never flew a Piper Cub, and they're running the Air Force. It's shocking. I'm nothing against women. Women are phenomenally brave, phenomenally competent. But he's picking all of these KGB operatives in order to report directly to him and make sure they don't do anything that might protect the nation. The bottom line, Anna Maria, is that rape is endemic in Afghanistan. The brave men who try to stop the Afghanis from raping boys are being, what, called on the carpet by Obama's stooges in the military? Is that the summary? That is the summary. And let me tell you one thing briefly. The Hold it. We're out of time. We're out of time. I mean, it's a disgusting topic. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Uh, the Guantanamo is an issue. It isn't actually completely factually a case. The people in... Illinois, we're looking forward to having uh, some people transferred there. They saw it as economic opportunity, as you may recall. The problem with Guantanamo has been the resistance of the Republicans to enable that policy to go forward. All right, welcome to the Savage Nation. The first thing to go is an in an elderly person is their judgment. I mean, actually, completely factually, it's true. Actually, completely factually, it is true. That the first thing to go in an elderly person, whether she's the Speaker of the House of uh, Stupidity or uh, whatever, ex-Speaker of the House of Stupidity, actually completely factually, how you can say that releasing terrorists from Guantanamo would be an economic opportunity for Illinois is something that even Little Richard couldn't understand. That triggers the beginning of our number two on the number one streaming news talk radio show in the nation, Michael Savage. And if you're listening to the Savage Nation on a landline, don't call me. Uh, if you're listening to me on a regular station, do call me. I mean, the bread and butter of the show are the radio, the radio stations with towers, which have names. I'm not denigrating the other stuff, but let's not get carried away here. It's the Major League Signals, WABC, WMAL. I know I'm going to forget someone to get slammed for it. KSFO, everyone's waiting to see if... WLS. No, these are big stations. Everybody wants to be on these big stations and the others. I've been on the others. I was on hundreds of stations with another syndicator, but never on these giant signals. And then when I started with Cumulus, I got onto the 
mainframe and the big signals uh, signals in drive time. And here we are. Now I could talk about the uh, the, the the thing here with the McCarthy, and it's about as interesting to me as uh, Paul Winchell and Jerry McCarthy, the the dummy. I mean, who cares about it's going to run for the speaker? We know it's a, just a, a, a nonsense game here. Second and Irving Day scrambling to find a new candidate for House Speaker. With Representative Paul Quisling Ryan now mulling the job. Think of Paul Ryan as Luis Gutierrez with an Irish name. That's all. I mean, if Luis Gutierrez, the human reptile, who represents illegal aliens, which means non-citizens says that Paul Ryan is his choice. What more do you need to know? What else do I have in sound before I take your uh, calls on any topic that uh, intrigues us? Oh, Peter King in clip five is pretty darn good. I think Peter King ought to be the Speaker of the House of Representatives. Let's hear clip five. I like this one. Everyone should be listened to. Everyone should be heard. But we're not a high school debating society. I think you need a speaker who can show leadership, but also, quite frankly, a speaker that can bang heads and break legs if he has to to get the job done. The, uh, conservatives in this country talk about Margaret Thatcher and about her leadership. When she took over the Conservative Party in Britain, she was brutal in purging her enemies. We have to get a job done, and we have to realize that you have a leader and you get behind him. Bingo. He ought to be the leader. He can break some heads and uh, break legs, bang heads and break legs. I like that rhetoric. Why, that has no place in the civilized society in which we live. All the school moms will attack him now. So I don't want to talk about that. I am so not interested in Dem Repub, Repub Dem. I'm really not interested in it. I can't take it. There's so many other things that I'd rather talk about, but I don't know what they are right now. I just know I don't want to talk about Democrats and Republicans. I would rather talk about pinworms in my dog's stool than talk about John Boehner. I would rather talk about a worm remedy for a dog that has worms than talk about the President of the United States. Because at least I know what medication exists to eliminate the worms in my dog. With him, he's such a rhetorician, you don't know what he's saying at any one time. Now, we know the nuclear deal with Iran violates U.S. law. That just came out today. That, that's a big story. But do you really care that Obama flouted the law to push through nukes for Iran? Why, you assumed he did it on the up and up, him and Kerry? I mean, Lurch is going to get a Nobel Prize for breaking the law and giving Iran a nuclear uh, weapon. We know that. So let's go to my website, michaelsavage.com, and see the stories that I found to be of interest. One, Black Lives Leader defends looting in Yale lecture. Now, the word Yale, when you say Yale, you think of, oh, Ivy League. You see Ivy colored, covered halls. Now take a look where they've degenerated. They take a street bum who led like rioters and burned arsonists, police beaters, and they put him into Yale University to lecture, and they're shocked that the first lecture he gives is justifying looting. Hired by the Divinity School. That, that's a laugh unto itself. All the Divinity Schools were taken over by the Deviants a long time ago. They're, they're smart. You got to hand it to the Deviants. They went after the most conservative and the most uh, um, Divinity. All the Divinity Schools were taken over by the Deves under the guise of, of uh, diversity. They eliminated the whole meaning of the word church, Christianity, morality, Ten Commandments, teaching, do the right thing. They took over the divinity schools. Just so clear. What's the next one? University dumps transgender bathrooms after peeping incidents. Oh, God, stop. No. University, oh, take a look at the doll who runs that university. Look at her face. If you ever met her in a dark alley, I'd run. Look at the ones who are running the colleges now. They're so mean looking, they're frightening. They look like Marines in drag, half of them. University of Toronto dumps transgender bathrooms after peeping incidents? Look at this gender-neutral restroom. Look at this, Tuffy. Ooh, look at her. I mean, I like to hate to run into her in a rodeo. Ugh, I don't like looking in a bathroom, even if it's clean. I have a thing. I can't, even if I go to an open house, I don't go in the bathrooms. I can't look at the toilet. Why do they show that on, like, Realtor.com? I don't want to see a bowl. Does anyone, do you agree with me? There's something so uncomely about our society. There's this thing here standing next to a gender-neutral restroom. The University of Toronto was recently enlightened on why two separate washrooms are generally established for men and women sharing co-ed residences. Okay. The university is temporarily changing its policy on gender-neutral bathrooms after two separate incidents of voyeurism were reported. Male students within the university's Whitney Hall were caught holding their cell phones over female students' shower stalls and filming them as they showered. Melinda Scott, uh, 
dean of students at the University of Toronto, told the Daily Wire that campus police had been contacted immediately and worked with Reddit to support impacted students and ensure the same. <laughs> I can't even read this. Impacted students. You hear they call a, a peeping Tom, the girl who got peeped, an impacted student. To me, an impacted student is someone who needs a, a dentist. That's an impacted student. Given the serious nature of the incident, blah, 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 male students in the room holding their cell phones. What a bunch of schmendricks. Oh, wait, what's this? What? Members asked them how they could be unfeeling enough to force men to use men's washrooms and women to use women's washrooms. What does the university have to say to this, the Daily Wire demanded. How could the university be so intolerant? <laughs> the university defended itself, asserting that more than 50% of the washrooms in the residence remain gender neutral. You know, it's gotten so crazy you can't keep up with it. It's, under, it's tagged under bathrooms, trans transgender, trans, I can't even say the word, University of Toronto. Before this, the only thing I knew connected to the word trans before this all came along were trans fats. I studied in the 70s. The Trans America Tower in downtown San Francisco. Uh, Transnational Airways, a fake airline in movies. But I never, I never saw the word trans attached to gender. Trans, trans, trans. Now it's everywhere you turn, trans. Everything's trans. Trans this, trans that. What else is in the news? Gang rape victim murdered in honor killing. Well, that's from the religion of pieces. Harry Reid says rubber band injury ruined his sex life. Oh, stop. That can't be true. He didn't put this out. Rubber band injury he's suing because it ruined his sex life? Wait a minute. Stop the music. How could you ruin a sex life that didn't exist? Well, I, I can't assume that didn't exist. Okay, I'm sorry. That's, that's not fair. Harry Reid says rubber band injury ruined his sex life. Let me see this story. Harry Reid, 75, filed a complaint against the makers and sellers of a TheraBand he was using. The TheraBand was mounted ooh, to a sturdy object in his bathroom. While in use, the TheraBand broke or slipped out of Mr. Reid's hand. Well, he's got sweaty palms. How can you blame the manufacturer of the exercise equipment if you've got a slimy hand and the, and the thing slides out of your hand? It says the TheraBand broke or slipped out of Reed's slimy hand, causing him to spin around and strike his face on a cabinet. The complaint alleges that Reed has suffered and continues to suffer from severe pain and injuries. Well, he's done that to America for a long time now. Loss of vision right eye, concussion, broken orbital bones, severe disfigurement, bruising, scarring, and broken ribs. And according to his wife, Landra Gould, a lack of sex. Uh, honey, I would say that's a blessing, not a curse. You know. I mean, why would a woman 75 say a lack of sex is a loss of something? I mean, I'm sorry, excuse me, do, am I missing something here? According to Harry Reid's wife, Landra Gould, a lack of sex, they're suing for that? Listen to this, on page 15 of the, <laughs> I'm not making any of this up, on the official legal document, the document reads, I'm, make, I'm making it up, quote, this is not like a daily, t as a result of the negligent acts of the defendants, plaintiff, plaintiff Landra Gould, was caused to suffer and will continue to suffer loss of consortium. Consortium has been defined in legal terms as the inability of one's spouse to have normal marital relations, which is a euphemism for sexual intercourse. Reed and Gould are suing for over 50 grand in damages from the makers and sellers, Hygienic Intangible Property Holding Co., the Hygienic Corp., and Performance Health LLC. Something's wrong with this picture. First of all, if you were in the jury, I want to ask you something. If, if it states right in the case that the TheraBrand broke, the TheraBand broke or slipped out of Reed's hand, how can you hold a manufacturer of it liable for anything when it may be that it slipped out of his hand? Because he had a slimy hand or he was weak or some, he was on the phone with someone, he got distracted and he was exercising, he was doing two things at once. Strike his face in a cabinet. Now the wife can't have sex. I'm sorry, it doesn't seem like a loss to me. I think she ought to pay the manufacturer a gift, like a, a, a bounty. <laughs> Unbelievable. Look what they write in this article. This is not fair in the Daily Wire. Now that he is sexually incapacitated, they write, Harry Reid can finally live up to his name. The Urban Dictionary, which lists user-submitted slang expressions online, define, quote, Harry Reid as, quote, a sexual position where you climb on top and then do absolutely nothing. That's stupid. I know that I don't find funny. See, I know funny. That's not funny.
I read it to see if it would be funny. I heard it it wasn't funny. First of all, the injuries are not 